Do you know the steps that you need to take if you have to have a confrontation this holiday season? Well, I've learned some steps in a book that I want to share with you today in this series that we're talking about in preparing for conflict during the holidays. This is the Heart in a Drawer podcast for adult children of divorce, and I am your host, Sarah Geringer. I am so glad to be with you. If you saw my recent feature in the podcast magazine, Welcome, if you haven't read that article yet, I will link it in the show notes. You can download it for free. So let's get started as we discuss this book today. I'm going to show those of you watching on YouTube. It's written by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend, How to Have That Difficult Conversation You've Been Avoiding. So a few years ago, I used this book for a confrontation that I needed to have with one of our extended family members. And the advice was so good for not just that conversation, but many conversations I've had since. It really lays out a detailed plan for you to follow so that you're fully prepared. Now this is hundreds of pages of wisdom, well worth the time to read it. I am just going to brush the surface quickly in this time we have today to give you an idea of some principles that you can take into this season if you're going to have to have a difficult conversation with one of your loved ones. So let's get started. It says that two people meeting to have the talk is a first step toward ending alienation. A boundary conversation is in and of itself a connection. The two are bringing their differences to the light of relationship and seeing what can be done. So when you set a boundary with someone, it's not because you wanna destroy the relationship, it's because you're working on building it up. I've talked many times about boundaries in these episodes and they have really worked to preserve my peace and they've worked to set some new and healthier structures around my relationships. So that's that's the attitude you need to start with if you're going to have uh, a conversation that's kind of difficult. Okay, and to expand on this, it says, part of the uniqueness of a boundary conversation is that it has a focus and an agenda. It is not generalized dissatisfaction with a person Rather, it points out some specific issue that is driving two people apart. So maybe this is why you've had frustrating conversations in the past, because they were just venting things. If you have a plan in place, you can actually accomplish a goal. You have a greater chance of doing so, in my own experience. And that's what this book really lays out for you. This is what it did for me in my time of need. So here are some principles to keep in mind. It says, remember that the other person has needs uh, just as you do. And even though you might be upset with someone, his ability to take in truth will also require love and grace just as yours does. Your intent is not to fix, straighten out, or punish. It is to provide enough amounts of truth and grace to reconcile and solve the problem. That was one of the most humbling things I learned from this book. It was one of the most useful things in terms of shaping my attitude before going into that difficult conversation because it reminded me that I'm a sinner just like just like they are and I need that same kind of grace. Here is another crucial element to these kind of conversations. It says use the formula when you do A, I feel B. This is in contrast to using you statements, you should, you didn't, you always, you never. Because anytime you say you, the other person is going to get uh, 
offended by it and put up a defensive wall and it doesn't promote conversation it just promotes a fight so it says this ingredient is also very important because it avoids blame and assault telling how you feel describes an internal reality of which the other person might not be aware and i would also add they can't argue with how you feel they can argue about whether they did or did something but they can't argue with your feelings and that formula has changed everything for me it has given me a lot of power in these kind of discussions that i didn't have before so it's really important and it's also a way to show respect uh, another uh, element is in preparing for this in is to try to be an agent for change. That's a position that you are taking. And they say earlier chapters have already talked about two things that go into being an effective agent for change. So one of those is to get the log out of your own eye so you can see clearly to help the other person. That's in Matthew 7, 3 through 5. So you really need to, in preparation for it, Ask God to search your heart for any way that you might be contributing to the problem, that you might have a judgmental spirit, or you might be using this to try to fix or punish someone. And if that's true, you've got to get that right with God first so that you're not coming from a position of uh, judging someone. And then it says, second, go in with a humble attitude that identifies with the other person's imperfections. The more we see the ways in which we don't always treat others perfectly either, the less we will approach these situations judgmentally and we will be more gentle and humble. So you can do a lot of that kind of work first with God and that will set you up to be an agent of change rather than someone who's just tearing down because you're angry and frustrated. Here's another important thing to remember that helped me when I was reading this book. It says, you can't always get what you want, but you'd better try. So you might have heard that old Rolling Stone song before, you can't always get what you want, but they're saying you'd better try in these relationships because uh, Proverbs 13, 12 tells us, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And they say your heart's desires and longings bring life to your life. If you don't have ways of making them known, they won't be met and you'll feel sick at heart. So Dr. Cloud, I've told you this before, he has a daily show uh, Monday through Friday and it's, it's based on all his books and a lot of it is about boundaries and he talks about the fact that people are afraid to set boundaries, but they need to do it for their own good, even if it never uh, has any other effects on the other person, uh, if that person is very unreasonable, which we're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, it's for their own good. It's for their own personal and spiritual growth and emotional health. And I completely agree with that principle. Now, here's what I was just alluding to. There's a section in here, chapter 16, making someone aware of a problem. And again, I'm just doing a flyby of this excellent book. It's well worth a couple hours of reading before you prepare for a conversation. So it says, you have to understand how aware a person is about herself and her effect on others. Some people, for various reasons, have little self-awareness they possess little ability to look at themselves and perceive what they're doing or why they're doing it. So they give guidelines for if someone has a little bit of self-awareness or quite a bit of self-awareness or if they're in real denial. And they actually show you ways to approach them depending on their awareness level. And I think that's really, really smart. It requires some wisdom and thought but I think that will help you diminish your hurt if they have an unfavorable reaction. And when I think back to the conversation I used this book to prepare for, this was back in 2014. When I think about the person that I was dealing with, 
they had very low self-awareness. And I think after going in and processing that conversation, reflecting back on what I had learned in this book, it really gave me peace that I was doing the best I could uh, based on the situation. And that's really all you can do. But at least if you're armed with this knowledge, you'll be better prepared. Uh, speaking of um, reactions to the confrontation, it says, uh, remember that confrontation doesn't always go smoothly and it may not even end well if you defined well as everyone singing kumbaya and in a love feast. But even when it does not, confrontation can have great value as a start or even as one of many in a series of conversations a person may receive over time. When she hears the same song over and over and again, one day she may experience a breakthrough and you will have been a part of that chain of truth. So don't be dismayed if a confrontation doesn't go smoothly or end well, at least at first. And you can ask the Lord to give you insight into how that was received and whether you need to keep pushing or uh, let it go. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. And so it talks about dealing with resistance. It says, um, if you have a resistant person in your life, the number one stance you will need to adopt to learn how to deal with her is this. Stop being surprised that she does not welcome the truth. That's so important. I'm going to I'm going to repeat it one more time. Stop being surprised that she does not welcome the truth. Now let me bring this home to us for as adult children of divorce, okay? I think one of the hardest things when we're on this growth journey and our parents are not necessarily on it, or our siblings or anyone else in the family involved in the situation who are fellow adults. It's hard to accept this, that they're not welcoming the truth if we already have. But if we can internalize what they just said, stop being surprised, then it will minimize the disappointment and discouragement that we have in these situations because when it comes down to it the only person that we can work on truly and affect change is ourselves and that's by the grace of god we don't have power to make other people change but we do have power to invite them to change if we're willing to have that difficult conversation with them that was another gem that I gleaned from this book of so much wisdom. Two more little thoughts to share with you from this book. Um, what they do toward the end of the book is they divide up the chapters into confrontations with different relationships, with your spouse, with your child, with people at work. And in this chapter, it's with your parent, which I think is particularly useful for us as adult children of divorce. It says, Every adult child must come to a point in her life when she gives up the demand for justice and lives in grace. She accepts God's solution of forgiveness and acceptance, the one he showed us in the unfair death of his son, so that we can live in relationship. As we live in grace, we are to extend it to others, especially our parents. Because Ephesians 4.32 tells us to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as is in Christ God forgave you. If you cannot love and honor your parents, get into God's healing process. Find a trusted friend, a support group, or a counselor to help you deal with the wounds your parents caused. This will help you to come to love and honor them. So just a couple comments about that. You know that I tell you all the time that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional help. It's supposed to be a supplement to the help that you can receive from a counselor or pastor. And you can go to that link I put in all of the show notes to make a, a one-time free call to focus on the family to talk with a counselor there. 
and I did that. It made a huge difference for me years ago. Another thing I wanted to say is, before I entered this difficult conversation in 2014, I had a phone conversation with three godly trusted friends who were not connected with one another, and I kind of rehearsed what I was going to say. And I asked them, I said, is there anything that you see wrong? Are there any blind spots I'm missing? Is there any correction I need on these issues? And when I practiced it with them and got their feedback, I was stronger going in. And I had three trusted people to go to to vent about this conversation that quite frankly didn't go very well, but they were there to support me afterward. And that is so, so important. Dr. Cloud and Dr. Townsend always tell us that we need a support team because we're not going to necessarily get that from our families as adult children of divorce. So do that work and you will be stronger because of it. Finally, it's the last thought to share with you today. Decide whether a conversation is worth it. After having done all of the things in this book, you may discover over time that confronting your parent is just not worth the cost. Barring life-threatening or very serious issues, you may need to let some things go and accept things the way they are. You don't need to leave the relationship or do anything radical. However, you may need to grieve the relationship you would like to have with your parents and connect with them in whatever way you can. Find the ceiling of what your parents are willing to look at and love the rest. Again, this is moving from dependency to love. Your mom or dad may never be part of your emotional support system. However, you can find much satisfaction and enjoyment in finding ways to safely connect with your parents and also to make some return to your parents for this is acceptable in the sight of God. That's from 1 Timothy 5, 4. I think that's a wonderful way to end the thoughts uh, in this episode that we just need to decide what are we going to say? Why are we saying it? What attitude are we going to say when we approach these people? And what is our goal? Is our goal to honor God and to honor the people that we love and care about? Or is our goal something just to satisfy our selfish natures? And the Holy Spirit is ready and waiting to help you discern the truth and to guide you through this conversation. I hope that you will get a copy of this book. It's a wonderful resource. It's linked in the show notes. And check out the extra edition I have, I have in my Patreon account for anyone who gives a donation this month to get you more prepared for this difficult conversation that you might need to have. So let me close us in prayer. Father God, we just praise you for never leaving us or forsaking us. We thank you that you are always by our side, even when we need to do difficult things and have difficult conversations. So we ask for your wisdom, Lord. We ask for you to guide us. We ask for you to help us choose our battles wisely and come to them with a spirit of grace, speaking the truth in love. And we know that if we do this, it might not fix everything, but if you're moving us to do it, it's worth it. And it's for your glory. Somewhere in the heavenly places, you receive glory when we stand up and do the right thing, even if it doesn't produce the results that we want. But sometimes it does, and that's also for your honor and glory, Lord. And so we trust you moving into this season whether we need to have this conversation or not, you are going to help and equip us. And we ask for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. I am so glad you've joined me for this episode. Next time, I'm going to talk about one of the best books I've read all year, and I'm on pace to read over 100 books this year. So I can't wait to share it with you. I hope you'll join me next time. And until then, I'm praying God's peace 
will rest on you and you will be able to enjoy your relationship with him as you go through this Advent season. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.